Good evening. Welcome to the Politica podcast. Tonight we have Mike Bird. And Mike, you're uh, going to throw your hat in the ring for the uh, state GOP chair. Yeah. Looking forward to it. It's been Pretty awesome. It's been an exciting time already. And um, it's uh, it's great getting to, to meet meet people and, and share my vision. You know, so you've been you've been in the leadership for quite a while, probably longer than anybody. Yeah, it's been, uh, I, was, I was first elected as the state party uh, treasurer four years ago and had a chance to, to work with uh, Derek and Derek Brown and, and that administration team for two years. And, and then now I've been serving with Carson Jorgensen and, and that team. And it's, it's, been, uh, it's been good to, to work with both you know, different styles and different approaches, but at the end of the day, um, one common ground, and that is that, that we want the, better, the party to be better. So, so what, what drove you to decide to throw your hat in the ring? Yeah, I had a lot more to drive me to not do it. Yeah, I can imagine that. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I think one of the, the biggest things that we've, we've noticed is we, uh, we just start finding a rhythm and a routine, and then that momentum just, you know, starts over when we go through these elections. Um, being someone that's um, continuously been with b two different leadership teams, I looked at 2024 as one of the most important elections, at least in my lifetime and for most um, people's lifetime. And we, we need to be prepared and we need to hit the ground running now. And one of the things that I've had a chance to be a part of was was uh, was organizing our, our conventions and, and caucus nights and fundraising. And I think those things um, are, are important to, to keep that momentum so we don't have to start over. 2024 is right around the corner. So. So just for a second, let's talk a little bit about you. I want to know a little bit about your background. Where, where, where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to school? Yeah. Uh, what brought you into the Republican Party? Yeah, I, uh, I grew up here, born and raised in Utah. I've, I, I actually, uh, my parents uh, at an early age got divorced. I was able to, to kind of experience a lot of different places in Utah, um, but I grew up in Heber City. I uh, attended Wasatch High for a little bit and then moved down uh, to Murray City uh, where my dad and my family have been. So I have, I have four boys uh, and we're always excited to say that they're fifth generation Murray. And so, yeah, I've, I've So been, did you go to high school down there or did I you did. finish at Wasatch? Yeah, I, I started at Wasatch and finished uh, at, at Murray. So oh, interesting. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I've been, uh, since, since I could register, I've been a, a, a Republican. I wanna say lifelong, because I, I, I grew up with, with a family that was rooted in our conservative principles. And I'm just so, so glad that they were able to teach me at an early age. So uh, yeah, w did that and, um, did a lot of different sports, played soccer, hockey, and uh, I was able to go on a mission and served in Sacramento, California. Oh, that's cool. And uh, when I returned home, I got married to my wife, Kim, and we've been, uh, we're going on 14 years, which is 14 years, which is really exciting. And we have, we have four beautiful boys. A lot of people that might be watching this have probably seen them around. They've, this will be their their third organizing convention that they've attended. And oh, interesting. So I'm, I'm excited for them. They, they uh, can be the life of the party, um, but they keep our, our hands full. And our oldest is eight and our youngest is, is three. So, you know, we've got, we, we've, we've got some things that we've been growing through. Carson, of course, is, has done a good job uh, as state party chair. But you know, this last election uh, seemed a little fractured to me. I hated the idea that we had this independent that actually got the Democrats to back him, but then he he kind of swung into this more conservative role, right? And of course, that upset a lot of the Democrats, I think. But uh, you know, I, I I didn't think that election was that great for our party. And how do we how do we bring it back together and get people on the same page again? Yeah, I mean, getting to, to witness that, it's amazing what you'll do with desperation. <laughs> and I look at that as, um, it was unfortunate that we had to deal with that. And um, I think that the Democratic Party um, is gonna get a chance to learn you know, what worked with that, what didn't. But as our party, we, I, I think what was really difficult about it is that we weren't prepared. Um, sometimes we, we just allow these elections to, you know, hey, it's going to happen. This is, this is Utah. We're a red state. This is a, this is a Republican seat. And for those reasons, I don't, I don't feel like we 
were prepared ahead um, enough. And so I think that we saw a little bit of chaos in this. And I think that that momentum that was carrying forward um, was, was mostly due to us just not um, taking it as serious as we should have taken that seat. Yeah, we, we really need to get, you know, I mean, SB 54 sprinted the, 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 uh, the party. I mean, I, I think that was kind of a blow to a lot of people. Uh, and, you know, but we've got to get that unity back. You know, of course, uh, you know, I, last convention, I mean, Mike Lee shows up and he's, he's a hero to the people that are in the party. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I think though we really have to bring the rest of the party back. Yeah, I think, I think you, uh, you're sharing something that I'm hearing a lot of as well. And that is, you know, we look at our party, we look at who's involved and, uh, we go, are we are we doing the very best that we can to grow our party? Is this a place that we are able to, to get new people, young people involved? Is this an exciting uh, party for, for people to say, I wanna, I wanna not only be a registered Republican, but I want to help and, and get involved. And, uh, and, and I always look at it and people said, well, Mike, how are you gonna unify the party? Um, I think that one of the things that unifies us as a as a party in general are is our platform. Yeah. And so I always say if we can focus on educating our Republican members on our platform consistently, not only in in times of desperation or when it's needed, we should be actively educating our Republican members because through education, especially on our platform, there becomes understanding. And I think that's what's really pushing us a lot of our members uh, you know, away from each other is our understanding of what our platform is and the things that we um, are holding dear and how we interpret things. So if we as a party can take the charge, we can take the initiative to educate, not allow the Democratic Party, not allow the media to try to educate them for us. I think we're gonna, it's gonna inevitably create a better sense of unity that we can share together. You know, uh, during this last legislative session, when I was working uh, with uh, with the group that was pushing the scholarship program, uh, you know, uh, it's it's interesting that uh, a voucher system or you know a scholarship system like we put forward is actually a pretty conservative principle, yeah. and in fact, it's it's in our platform. Yep. Uh, especially if you look at the National Republican platform, it's a huge piece of that whole page about it. And uh, I, I just thought it was interesting that I had to fight so many people within the party on that principle, which has been a conservative principle for a long time. And, uh, you know, I'd like to get people to come back to the platform, really, right? And, uh, I think it'll it'll bring a lot more people to the table. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's needed. I if we don't take these steps now, um, I mean, our state is growing at a rapid rate. You 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 get to see this just through uh, through your time in the session. I mean, we're we're about sixty to a hundred thousand new people coming in um, every year, and I look at it and I go, how are we doing as a party? Are we keeping up with this growth? And uh, the numbers are telling us that we're not. We're not keeping up with this growth. And so what that means is we're not doing enough to either um, reach out to people to, to you know, learn more about the party and, and um, learn more about the platform and get excited about wanting to make a difference. So that's one step. But then the, the next step is, are we creating an environment that is welcoming? Are we creating an environment that our young um, future leaders want to be a part of? Or is it just easier to take a step back and go, I'm just going to be unaffiliated. I don't want to deal with all of the, the drama per se or all of the fighting that, that I keep seeing. Um, and I think we do need to look at this seriously and we need to take a step back and go, are we strengthening our organization or are we weakening it? because of the things that we're deciding that we want to fight. Right. Well, and that's why I think coming back to the platform is is really important. I, uh, you know, I remember when I had Deidre Henderson on 
of podcast a lot of people were were uh getting mad at me for that and i thought you should go listen to it i mean here's a person that was the campaign chair for for jason chaffetz probably one of our most conservative representatives we've had and so i you know we got to get away from this extreme litmus test i think that we have uh and you know i'm i'm saying that coming from what the tribune says is the far right of the party <laughs> right and so you know i i just would like for us to get back to those principles that are in the yeah i mean it's not first off i i look at it as you know those that are involved um that that are that are a lot louder and more outspoken they're they're passionate they're passionate about our party they're passionate about our platform and we need people like oh that. we do i mean we 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 should i know i know that you, you talk to a lot of different people and they go oh those that's the, that group of people are the reason why we're we're you know not unified but at the end of the day no they're the ones that show up right? the, the, they're the, the ones at the end of the day there. they're the ones that are are passionate about what needs to be done and um the accountability piece is important so I don't ever want to focus on not needing that. We need that and we right. need more accountability. We need more involvement and we need, we need more passion. We need right? more, thank you. We that, need well, that's more passion. Why, that's why you can't, you can't say, oh, well, you know, and I've heard a lot of people say, a lot of my colleagues say, you know, these, these people are so extreme and I'm saying, no, actually they're not that extreme, right? right? They just believe in the basic principles in our party. And I think one of the reasons why they react the way they do is because we maybe we floated a little bit too far the other way right you know and uh it is that it is that push and pull and it's needed and and we always need that to kind of get us back to 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 normality and get us back to to what you know what we're really in business for as a party right and uh and so yeah i but but to that point as well we also have a lot of republicans that are disengaging from the party. And uh, and we, we definitely want to do what we can on both sides to engage each other professionally, to work with each other. Um, it, I think it's probably near impossible to, to always be on the same page. Right. It's, it, it, you know, but with that said, can we definitely, can we take the words of Ronald Reagan? Can we, can we disagree 20% of the time, but agree 80% of the time and still be friends and still right. be allies. And, uh, and I think that if we're going to be successful, we have to really take that, those approaches to, yeah, we have to look at those, those areas where we have agreement. And I, I personally believe that's back to the platform. Exactly. I mean, and, and that, again, I, I, I don't want to ever get away from the platform because as I'm talking to delegates, uh, nonstop right now, that's that's really their concern. How are we going to unify each other? Um, how are we going to hold each other accountable? And it really does come back to the platform. Somebody asked me, well, you know, the platform is pretty broad. Give me an example of what you mean by educating on our platform. And I, I said, well, look at what we're dealing with. Look at look at the things that, I mean, look at the students right now. Um, the student loan forgiveness, for example. Right. I mean, if you let that go and you just let that happen, what is what are we letting the federal government do to educate our younger generation? Well, you look at the you you look at the identity politics that are out there right now. Some of the things that I was fighting this time in the session, this you know diversity, equity, inclusion. That on on the surface that seems like a really good thing, <laughs> but when you when you dig in and you find the the literal Marxist roots of a lot of that stuff, you start saying, look. These are things Ronald Reagan wouldn't have put up with, right? Yep. So let's go back. And, and, and if you look at our platform, it's very much from that era. Yep, absolutely. And, and, well, and, and you look at what's happening right now in, in the legislature. Uh, this, this, you know, for people on the outside to look in and say, this wasn't a conservative legislature this year, they're dead wrong. I mean, yep. you know, we, we, we did so many great conservative things record tax cuts uh record support for public education uh you know scholarships for students that don't fit right i, I mean you think about what's go gone on there and you know this is a very very conservative session and uh 
you know, the governor seems to be on board, right? And so, you know, we could, we've, we've got to stop, we, we've got to stop playing identity politics inside and start looking outside, I, my personal opinion. Right. I mean, we, you know, we, we don't want to take any of the playbooks from the Democratic Party. We don't want to be the party of cancel culture. We don't want to be the party of divisive behavior. Um, at the end of the day, I mean, and thank you for a great session, by the way. Um, really appreciate Historic. it. Historic. It really was. I mean, the, the tax cuts alone, the tax cuts alone. And I'm, I hope more, more um, people recognize that. Um, but yeah, thank you and, and thanks to our Senate and, and to our House for all that they've done. Um, this but, new group of people in the House, I, I tell you, they, they all came from very conservative backgrounds. And, and you see that, you see that passion go throughout the whole legislature. And uh, this was a very conservative session. Well, and I, and I like hearing that and I love seeing it. And I... I think too that that conversation kind of steering to it uh, relates, uh, you know, a lot to why I'm running as well. We're, you know, one of the things that for some reason we try to shy away from is the relationships that we as a party should have with our elected officials. And, uh, you know, we, we kind of are trying to model and think about Florida for right now. I right. mean, right now, Florida right. is, a, is a national benchmark in the realm of politics of how did the Republican Party do what they did in Florida? And uh, I had a conversation with their team um, the other day and uh, you know, if I don't know if anybody's ever gone onto their site or just kind of watched what they do as a party, but they are so intertwined together. They work, it's, it's almost like a synergy from, from their, their legislature, their, their party leaders, um, it, it's just something that I, I look at and I go, that's how you get stuff done. Um, I think there's an important avenue though, like you wanna be careful and you wanna have that separation of powers and, and to be able to hold people accountable, but we shouldn't be putting a wall in between yeah. the party and, the, and our state legislature. We should figure out how are we working together and, and always go back to the platform. We should always go back. Um, we you know, we help candidates all the time, all through the year, new candidates, hopefully recruiting them and consulting firms are always helping them. And it's always, well, what are you gonna run on? What's your platform? What's your platform? And they look at the topics of the day, the hot topics and go, you should focus on this, focus on this. And I wish that we had more direction to go, well, let's open up our platform. Why don't we look at what it means for economic prosperity? Why don't we look at what it means of individual freedoms and rights? Why don't we look at our platform to help design us to be better candidates? Um, and, and again, that's why the party exists. A lot of people have been asking, well, Mike, what are you gonna do about this? What are you gonna do about this? What are you gonna do about the housing crisis? What are you gonna... And I look back and I go, as state party chair and as, as an organization, <coughs> we should be looking at why we exist. And at the end of the day, we exist to grow, recruit, educate, and win elections. Sometimes we overcomplicate these things by taking the hot topic and getting derailed. And so that's really where I wanna focus is take a step back, strengthen our party, grow our party, educate our members, win elections, and you know what? Support our candidates, not only candidates, but our elected officials. Yeah. I, I think that's an important point, especially coming off this last election where where we had an independent candidate, right? That, you know, gave gave a very conservative Mike Lee a run. Uh it ended up being a pretty pretty big margin at the end. Well it's but, it's it's it it goes to show how influential the media really can be, right? I mean uh, we we felt so comfortable with his his uh, his victory from so far you know yeah. well ahead but it, it is amazing how influential and how close it could, it was in the eyes of of the media and even in the public because of that so we are grateful for the outcome but right. to your point well and that's why that's why I say look we we need to unify more of us together in the party we don't need to lose. A, a big chunk of Utah, right? Uh, and you know how how do we do that? And I think I think the Lee campaign did a good job of 
you know, really unifying, bringing people back to the table. And, uh, you know, now we've got another election coming up where I, I think, you know, hey, let's, let's fight it out in the primary. But when that primary is over, we need the Republicans to be in charge. I believe. Right. No, I, I and I couldn't I couldn't agree more with you. Um, I, I think that's one of the the biggest topics right now is you know who who we should be supporting right now early on and and it's such a hard one coming as a party leader because you go here is who I support. I support candidates that are willing to represent our platform that are willing to be accountable for their votes and be accountable for their actions. And I want to help facilitate an avenue that does that. And so at this point, all I want to do is make sure that that avenue is robust, that that avenue is organized, that that avenue is well-funded so we can have the very best organization. We call ourselves an organization, but I still feel that we're far from organized. And uh, we, we really do need to get back to why we're in business. Right. Well, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Thanks, John. Welcome back to Politica Podcast. We're here with Mike Bird. Mike, I, I really appreciate you coming in. I, I'm excited about your, you know, wanting to move forward in leadership at the party. Uh, you've been in there through a couple of different administrations now, uh, and you guys have you guys have done a good job. It, it's been a hard couple of years for the party. Oh yeah, it's, uh, I mean, anyone that knows uh, 2019 coming into this was, wasn't easy. I mean, I, we came into it with a lot of debt. Yeah. And so anytime that happens, you can probably assume where the focus is need to be. And, right. and I was so grateful to work with Derek um, during that time. He did such a good job at, at really getting people to the table and, and fundraising the, the big debts and, and then coming on to, to working with Carson and being able to really focus on the grassroots and be able to, to start you know focusing on our platform and the things that really make us who we are. It's been, it's been unique, but it's been so fun, so rewarding, um, but it, it, it doesn't mean that we're there yet. The question yeah. is, is have we moved the needle? So, so what's your plan? What, what, what do you think you can do in this position that will move us a step further? Yeah, I, I mean, the, the biggest thing is knowing that, you, that we're debt free allows us to focus on why we exist. And, you know, I look at the party and one of the things that I, I was very involved with the last election was helping our candidates um, you know, with with uh, mailers and, and things that they were doing to market and work with their consulting firms. And I look at it and I go, what can we as a party do more of? Um, are we reliant on other people, outside organizations um, to, to provide the necessary data? Are we in the business of providing volunteer lists? Have we been in the business of actually recruiting these candidates that are running? And I would say that it's it is unfortunate that we haven't been able to provide these things to our our, our candidates or our elected officials. Um, you know, we we don't actually have a, a, a comprehensive database uh, of our own party members within the state of Utah. We don't have a robust or a comprehensive volunteer database. Um, all of these things I look at as key and necessary for our organization to be healthy and to be effective and to be relevant, uh, to, to be completely honest. So I want to get our party to the point when somebody is going to run or somebody that has been elected is running or needs support. They can go to the party and go, I want to do this. And we can say, here's how you do it. And here's what you need to do it. I, I think that we just have been too reliant on outside um, organizations to do this for us. Um, a good example is recruiting. As you know, um, most people that file, file just before the deadline. <laughs> and and typically they're candidates that are kind of thrown into it just because we need to fill a seat. And I'll tell you that the party has not been as involved as it should be in that endeavor. So I just look at it and go, what can we do as an organization? And I just think what we need to do is be more organized, um, offer these things, have comprehensive data, 
have comprehensive volunteer lists, have an organized structure. One of the things that unfortunately we're dealing with more than ever is uh, is all of our overhead has been so expensive. We've, we've spent more money on rent, you know, than anything. And I would love to see us have a stable, um, permanent headquarters for the GOP. Um, all of these things are important to show we're not going anywhere. And, and I hope that we can, um, and, and one of the things that I really wanna focus on are those things. Sometimes again, we get derailed. We focus, either we have to focus on the debt or we have to focus on the, the hottest topic that's out there. And it really drives us away from what makes us the, the party that we are. Well, and you know, I, I keep coming back to, uh, I, I mean, you think about it, Utah was a blue state, right? And, and this is in my time period, right? Uh, you know, when I was in college, Ronald Reagan was president, right? Uh, uh, I, I remember working on the first reelection campaign, um, you know, for Orrin Hatch. Uh, very, you know, here's this here's this young guy, Orrin Hatch, that comes in here, and talks about defending the Constitution and talks about conservative principles. <coughs> Was actually fairly close to to Reagan. You know, Reagan came here twice in that campaign, but Hatch actually beat beat out Frank Moss, a longtime Democrat leader. And, uh, you know, it was the Roe v. Wade decision during that period, I think, that really drove uh, the Republican uh, Party in Utah. And, and, you know, prior to that, you know, you couldn't win a lot of, uh, well, in Weber County, where we are, you couldn't win any seat if you were a Republican. Uh, our congressional seats went to Democrats. I, you know, and so... But it's interesting, a lot of our party platform was developed in that era. So let's, let's go back to being the party of Ronald Reagan, right? I mean, I, I think that's what gets people energized and together and on the same page. Uh, we have a common enemy that we're trying to fight, right? And it's actually not much different than the one back then. Our young people are coming out of college thinking that, you know, Karl Marx was some kind of hero and you know, they, they wear T-shirts with Che Guevara on it. And, you know, I, I mean, it's ridiculous from the standpoint of the party of Reagan. How do we get back to that? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I look at this and I, all I can think of is that looking at the change and the shift that we've experienced in Utah, we should first never take for granted what we have or what we had. And, and far too often, and, and actually directly in our platform is that we, we want to focus on American, um, we want to preserve our American history. Right. And, and I just look at that and I go, our, our narrative now is that, no, 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 we need to move forward and we need to change and we need to progress. And, and the question is, what are we doing to go back and, and preserve these things that actually made us who we are? And I know it's it's so controversial with um, with our signature gathering and our grassroots caucus and convention system, and nobody wants to hear it. But this group, that's all they want to hear. And and I look at it and I go, if we're going to go back into those times, we should look at how those times were structured, and we should we should actually say that there's some relevance in how we as a party organized ourselves through the grassroots process, right. how we elected people through the grassroots process. And then we just probably have to ask ourselves, where did that change and what shifted? And I think the argument is, well, we're not getting enough people involved that actually represent our whole party. And for those reasons, there's only certain people involved. And it's not whether they're saying that's not giving the best outcome or, or however people wanna argue it. At the end of the day, I think there's value in going back. I think there's value in seeing what we had and how we got there. And I can't overlook that that was through our grassroots process, right? Our grassroots process of information and knowledge and accountability. Um, but if that's going to work, if we're ever going to get back there, we need to get more people involved. We have to get more people to the table. 
we have to understand that there, that we are a party. We are the most diverse party. <laughs> Quote me right? on that. Yeah. We really are. And I'll tell you that this isn't just diversity in, in race. This isn't just diversity in gender. We are the most diverse party in thought. And I think that's why we are sometimes at odds with each other is we are constantly battling well, well, we our need thoughts. To start, we, we need to start fighting our common enemy. Right. And you know, it's it's interesting, this legislative session, if you look at historic conservative principles that were put forward, I mean, we even passed a bill on outlying critical race theory in, in public schools. Right. Right? You didn't hear about it much in the paper. Right. You know, uh, but we did. And we're, we're fighting back and we're saying, look, we're gonna go back to, to the shining city on a hill, right? I like, I like that. And I, I mean, to your point, you know, who are we fighting the most with? I, I, I don't like the word fighting, but fighting in the sense that we are defending, right? right. Um, but what, what are we focusing on? And I, I think internally, we have the most internal struggle right now. And we, we spend our resources, we spend our energy, we spend our time on fighting our very own. Um, and, and I'll just tell you right now that, that our opponent, who we seem to not want to fight more of than our own selves, they in Utah are, are organizing themselves. They are organizing themselves, they are well-funded, and uh, they they look at this and they're taking it serious. And so we at minimum have to really look at that and go, don't discredit who our opponents are and who, who we should really be defending right. against. Right, these people have taken over our public schools, they've taken yep. over higher ed, and, and we just are fighting each other rather than going after this. We're, we are, what we don't fully understand is that the time and energy that we do that is amplified the, the, our democratic opponents and they're looking at this and every time we can have a narrative to fight against each other they are sitting back and going our efforts are being doubled right, right. now and and we should never give that door and, and push it open for them we should never do that we shouldn't be in the business of that we should be in the business of our party our members and and getting us stronger and yeah. and, and and sometimes we lose focus and and uniting and fighting the good fight right yep, absolutely back to you know reagan reagan was always so positive about our history and and the fact that we were this shining city on a hill right we the greatest country in the history of the world yep and uh why we allow that to be eroded i i have no idea yeah you know and uh we need to unite the people that we have. We do, you know, and, and all these things that I'm talking about, you know, some will tell you, well, that takes money. <laughs> that always takes money. And it's like, it does, it takes money, it takes resources, it takes, um, it takes uh, you know, volunteers. It, it, takes a, it takes an army to get these things accomplished. And, and I know some will come back and talk about the, the, you know, the financial status of the party and the fundraising. And one of the biggest things that we are looking at right now is um, kind of this avenue of the party used to be the only avenue that people would go through to support candidates and to donate to. Um, and we're seeing a lot bigger of a shift now where people are going, I'm not gonna donate to the party, I'll just donate to the candidate. Um, and, and I don't know if people recognize what that does, but we should be looking at the organization as strengthening the organization because in turn- And that putting was, out a clear vision. Yes. Right, that, that I think that's what's been lacking in, in a lot of ways. Right, and, and people say, you know, Mike, you know, you need to, you know, how, how are you gonna fundraise? How are you gonna fundraise? And I look at it and I go, listen, you can raise a million dollars for the party and still not move the needle. Right. If, because the money <laughs> and the donations that come into the party are only as good as the initiatives that it's gonna be used on. And so we need to set a clear path for, and, and if our candidates, our grassroots donors, our large donors, if they can see that what we're doing as an organization is to strengthen our state, to strengthen our party and our members, um, it can be a commonality to donate to. 
Um, but that that should be laid out is this is what we want to focus on. I, I know I, I don't won't go into it because I've already laid out where we should focus. Right. But that's where I look at this time and this money that's coming in to support is to say, we're going to do less of this and this and we're going to do more of this that will strengthen our party. Right. Very good. Uh, talking to Mike Bird, I mean, candidate for uh, the uh, Utah GOP chair. Uh, why don't you, I, I mean, we're about out of time, but why don't you just look into that camera and, <laughs> and uh, assume that these are convention goers and uh, tell them why they should vote for you. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, first of all, if you are a state delegate, thank you. Um, the, the, this is the involvement that is needed. We need more people to not just register. We need people to get involved. And taking that next step as being a delegate is, is exactly that. Um, if you're not a state delegate, this is such a great opportunity, John, to be able to say, how can I get more involved? How can I make more of a difference? Um, in 2024, we're gonna have a new caucus night. And this is a great opportunity for more people that have not <coughs> been involved or, or have been involved historically to go, you know, I wanna get back involved in the grassroots. I want to make a difference. I want to get involved. Um, I, I am just so excited. I've been grateful for the four years of serving. I know there's a lot of work to do. I know that we as a party need to do better. We need to be better. Um, but I love this state. I have four little boys. I want, these, I want these boys to stay here in Utah as they grow up. I want it to be a safe, affordable state. And I know that that will only come through our conservative platform and through the policies that our Republican Party will put forth. And so if I can do anything to help that, if I can do anything to help your experience, if I can do anything to help your future, um, this is a two-year volunteer position. Uh, we have to be realists. We have to look at what can actually be done in two years. And, and that's why at this point, 2024, huge election. We need to keep momentum. We need to have consistency. It's one of the things that I'm offering and it's one of the things I'm willing to do. So thank you so much. And thanks for having me, John. I thank really you. appreciate it. Mike Bird, uh, we'll see you next week.